Hi, my name is Mary Constantine, and for my Integrated Criminal Justice Capstone Project, I chose to talk about gun control laws. The reason I chose this topic is because it's important to me, and I believe the American government is incredibly ignorant with regard to such laws. The American people need to understand that gun control laws are ineffective, as proven through these laws, which seek to revoke American citizens' right to bear arms in retaliation to the misconception that gun ownership leads to an increase in violent crime, excessive crime rates in the country, and allows easier access to guns on the streets. While I understand that everyone has a different perception and understanding of what gun control is, it is truly defined as a set of laws in which the government seeks to regulate the manufacture, sale, transfer, possession, modification, or use of firearms by the civilian population. To summarize, gun control laws is the American government's way to tell the American people what they are and are not allowed to own and do with firearms they have legally possessed. Similar to other topics under such political scrutiny, there are pros and cons to gun control laws. Some of the pros are aiming to reduce the number of firearms within American neighborhoods, working to ensure convicted criminals cannot obtain firearms, and decreasing the amount of accidental deaths due to firearms. However, those in opposition of gun control laws will tell you that no legislation can ever truly ensure that firearms do not end up in the hands of convicted criminals, that those who legally possess firearms act as a deterrence within their neighborhoods, and that if the government were to take away the American people's right to bear arms, they would be infringing upon their rights and effectively forcing them to live in a more dangerous country with no means to protect themselves. Americans are citizens of a free country that grants them some basic fundamental rights via the United States Constitution. The purpose is to ensure that their freedom is not diminished or withdrawn from the American people by the government or any entity thereof. Perhaps most important of the amendments to the United States Constitution is the Second Amendment, which states a well-regulated militia as being necessary to the security of a free state, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed upon. Liberals will argue that the Second Amendment is about collective rights and was meant only to limit the ability of Congress to regulate guns in a way that would keep state governments from protecting themselves. However, conservatives contend that the Second Amendment is about protecting the individual's right to bear arms. Without the Second Amendment, American government could accrue enough power throughout time that it could force the American people into a communist or socialist style government and the people would have no means to fight back against them. Gun control laws have been created and abolished several times over throughout America's history. Perhaps one of the most famous laws is the Federal Assault Weapons Ban Act of 1994, which was signed into legislation by President Bill Clinton. The purpose of the Federal Assault Weapons Ban of 1994 was to prevent the sale of any semi-automatic weapon to civilians and was a fearful retaliation to a mass shooting that took place just before the ban was signed in. There was much controversy about the ban then, and not much has changed since President Joe Biden has taken office and spoken of similar legislation. The real question is, when will America learn? History has repeatedly proven that deterrence is a main cause for criminals to decide against committing a criminal act, and will continue to be an effective strategy to keep crime rates down in this country. One main topic of debate regarding gun control laws is the correlation between crime rates and the number of people who own firearms. American government contends, excuse me, consistently preaches as long as firearm sales increase, so will crime rates. But what they fail to enlighten the American people is how a high number of firearm sales could be beneficial to the country. According to a study conducted by Monatow and others, data supports a hypothesis of connection, but overall claims there is no significant relationship between crime and the possession of guns. 
Imperative to note is that some states have a higher rate of gun owners due to the average response time of first responders within their states, such as Montana, where the response time averages 22 minutes. Therefore, owning a gun in Montana is literally a difference between life and death. Living in America can be wonderful in a sense that each state differs drastically, and that is no different when examining gun laws. Several states have enforced strict gun laws to fight back against school violence, but that is ineffective as most of the guns used in school shootings have been obtained via theft on someone who has legally obtained the weapon. Therefore, enforcing strict gun laws or requiring a more in-depth background screening on those who wish to legally possess a gun is going to continue to be ineffective as those are not the individuals that we should be screening against. Paramount to this paper is understanding how the American people feel about gun control and how legislative proposals regarding gun control have divided a country whose belief once was united we stand. The United States of America has been divided up into three main areas, the Northeast, the Midwest and the West, and the South. The Northeast is mainly in favor of strict gun laws and believe that firearms pose a massive threat to their communities as a large population of gun, of gun owners provides criminals with a large supply of guns. The Midwest and the West cover a vast majority of United States territory and consist of a lot of plain land in which hunting is a primary source of food. The mindset instilled with this kind of an upbringing um, Excuse me, given the mindset instilled with this kind of upbringing, firearms are largely supported. However, there are liberal states coupled in this group, such as California, but the overall consensus is in opposition of gun control. Last to discuss is the South, who is largely in opposition of such laws and typically own a variety of firearms in their homes. With that being said, the South also believes in being well educated about firearms prior to being able to legally obtain one. One of the most supported laws by both sides is having a background screen conducted. Background checks are currently conducted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, there are several faults with the current process. While an individual is screened through three systems, the National Crime Information Center, which checks for warrants, domestic violence, missing persons, fugitive records, and more, the Interstate Identification Index, which contains criminal history and information about serious crimes, and the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, which catches all other pertinent information not in the purview of the other systems, backgrounds are not completely effective. Individuals can pass a background screening, but then turn around and commit crimes which are not recorded and updated, meaning that background checks are only valid to the date in which the background screening was ran. Another view on this is that one could go through the proper channels and legally obtain a weapon, but then turn around and commit a heinous crime, as intent is not screened through this process. Last to discuss is how gun control affects the black market, and the easiest way to describe this is to examine the war on drugs that America faced. As legislation was passed to further ban drugs and anything pertaining to, the drugs in the black market increased in sales and supply and demand. Therefore, it stands to reason that by establishing laws that ban American citizens' rights to legally purchase and own firearms, in an attempt to guarantee the country is safer, the government is effectively working against itself. Upon exploring both views on gun control, it is easy to understand how gun control laws will never be effective, as such legislation would ultimately deprive Americans of a right that is guaranteed to them through one of America's most profound documents in, in its history, the United States Constitution. By utilizing the viewpoint of those in favor of gun control, 
It is simple to see why individuals question their ideology as a lack of planning and failure on their part to understand the consequences of such legislation is blatantly obvious.